This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. I want to give a quick update about Hack Across America because people have been asking about those dates and it's all at hack5.org or hackacrossamerica.com. And as you can see, I am going to be in Flagstaff, Arizona, the 17th through the 19th of May at the Overland Expo. You're going to see some really cool video blogs from this. Uh, so stay tuned, as well as on May 21st, right outside of Sacramento in Lincoln, California, there's a 3D printer meetup with the PrinterBot folks. Uh, then I will be heading to Eugene, Oregon for some hackerspace goodness, so if you're in the area, definitely come by. And we're going to be doing a huge meetup in Portland, Oregon with our friends over at Domain.com. I can't wait to see everybody there. So if you're in the area, definitely get in on this one on the 25th. And then from there, it's Seattle and who knows? So if you haven't already, sign up at HackerCrossAmerica.com. You don't have to be a hackerspace to get in on this. You just want to I have to have a technolist in your heart and want to be able to get in on this. So uh, let me know and find all the details over there at HackerCrossAmerica.com. I'll see you guys on the road. Lately, there's been so much talk about getting all your stuff hacked and passwords getting out into the wild from people like Living Social and whatnot. And there has also been a lot of talk about things like cookies and what advertisers are collecting your information and all sorts of different, you know, target markets that are trying to look up whatever's going on while you're surfing the internets in the background. Well, I got a lot of questions about Chrome privacy extensions, like which ones do I choose and which ones do what and why don't I use this one? Well, because of that, I just decided to give you guys a little bit of a roundup. So each of these extensions that I'm going to talk about today does something special, whether it's blocking ads or just blocking JavaScripts, or maybe it's just blocking all sorts of third party software. You'll, you'll know what exactly is going on in your browser while you're surfing. So let's go ahead and get right down to it. So first off is not script. This is the first one. It increases your security by blocking scripts on a domain by domain basis. So instead of just blocking all JavaScripts throughout the entire Chrome browser, you can block them depending on a certain website. So it's incredibly customizable and it's very, very detailed oriented. So it may be a little bit frustrating as when you first begin with it. Now, if I pull it up on here, and I'm going to go ahead and enable it. And I'll tell you why I have some of these disabled at the end of the show. So I'm going to enable this. And I'm going to refresh hack5.org. And I get this little triangle up here. And you may be wondering, what the heck is that thing? Now, when you first get into Not Scripts, it's going to ask you for something specific. It's going to say that you need to add in a password. Password is set, not scripts is working, enjoy your browser. Now, for the first step, you'll need to come down here and either copy this into your directory so that you can change the password uh, following their directions. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. Um, after you have set your password, you're ready to go. Now, the reason they have this password to begin your use is because it protects your privacy by blocking any websites from collecting the not script whitelists. So as you use this, you're going to create an, a white whitelist for yourself so that anything that you do will continue every time you close your browser and continue on with a new one. Now, if I pull a pack five right here, you'll see everything looks like it's working well, but look, there's nothing under share. That's strange. And if I go down here, I still have all my normal ads from a hack shop and everything down there. And it's showing up a little weird because I have my resolution changed for the show. Now, not scripts is going to give you this nice little directory of whatever you want to change. It's going to say if you want to block YouTube, no cookie.com, uh, YouTube image.com, which you probably don't want to block for hack five. And there's also some other ones down here, hack five.org, Twitter, if you want to block that, uh, and Google analytics, I can block Twitter because I don't really want to share to Twitter right now. I just want to watch the show. And it'll refresh each time so you don't have to go and close your browser every time you want to change something. Now you will notice when you first begin to use this, it's going to block everything from your use. So you're going to notice that maybe YouTube doesn't show up or maybe you're having issues accessing a site and nothing is showing up. All you have to do in that case is go up here and just change whatever needs to be changed. And most of them are pretty obvious. If it's an advertiser, it's going to say something like, you know, advertise.com. YouTube, you don't want to block because, you know, you got to watch our show because it's awesome.
So that's basically how you use knot scripts. Um, you can tell it's pretty customizable and it's, uh, it might be a little irritating because you do have to change all those settings at first. Now the next one you want to check out is Add Block Plus. This one blocks all those really annoying pop-ups, those banners, etc., that you might see from day to day. Now you can create your own filters here too. And here's an example of how you would do that. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my extensions and disable that one for now. Add block plus, and I'll refresh hack five. So add block plus gives you this little icon up in your search toolbar. If you click on this, you can enable for this site. If I hit disable, it's just going to disable add block. So it's going to show you all the ads for that site. I'll click it on again, and I also want to do this thing called easy create filter. When you click on this, it's going to refresh the page again for you. And it's going to create all these weird little yellow markings. Like, what's going on with that? What this does is create a very easy way for you to target a certain ad and choose to have it removed. Adblock Plus gives you this nice little pop-up. It says Add Filters. You can have a filter for that specific image or for that um, you know, tracker or what have you. Click Add, and it disappears. Never to be seen again, and it makes your website move a little bit faster. Now, say you accidentally remove something that you actually want to put back. That's really easy to fix. You just right-click, go to Options, click on Add Your Own Filters, and you can remove selected. So I'm going to pick bring back that picture of me wearing a toque, because I like the toque. And if you refresh, it'll appear right back where it's supposed to. So if I scroll down, and there it is, Hack5 toque, and the USB rubber ducky ad. How cool is that? So easy to use. The next one is Ghostery. Ghostery blocks third-party elements, just like social network widgets and ads and trackers, all those things. And it's going to notify you, and you can choose to OK or block them on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, this is how this one works. So I'll go back into my extensions, disable Ad Block Plus, and enable Ghostery. And on this one, I think I'm going to use Engadget as an example. So I'm going to refresh Engadget. And what's this? I get all these little advertisers in this purple box up here, which is kind of weird at first. It's like, OK, it's a purple bubble. That's cute. So if I click on this, it disappears. But what I can do is go into Ghostery, and it's going to show me a list of all those targeted advertisers who are trying to advertise to me on Engadget.com. Now, what I can do is click on a certain one, choose More Info, and it'll give me all sorts of information about that specific advertiser. And I can also close it and go back into it again. I can choose to pause Ghostery, so it'll pause blocking, and I can see all the ads again. And I can edit my blocking options. So if I want to go ahead and block all of them, I can choose that. I can choose don't block if I wanted to. Pause or start again. And close. Refresh. And now it shows, you, shows me in the little purple bubble that everything is blocked. So it's all striked through. And you can tell that everything is gone. And you can just click that away if you ever get kind of bored of that little purple bubble. Now, another thing about Ghostery is that's not necessary if you're already using NotScript. Not to mention, if you're running both at the same time, it can get kind of hairy whenever you're trying to find an ad if you, for some reason, wanted to see it. And you can't figure out which different extension is blocking it at that moment. It's kind of annoying. Next up, Vanilla Cookie Manager. Now this lets you whitelist cookies from certain sites in case you need them for authentication or for site preferences, which is kind of useful in some cases or other reasons. Now since cookies can also be used to track you, what you do on other sites, you can also block those as well. Now for an example, I'll use hack5.org again. So I'll go over here, I'm going to refresh the site again, disable that. Vanilla cookies, which makes me super hungry. OK, so once Hack 5 has refreshed, I notice up here I have this little cookie that's somewhat bitten through. And it gives me the options to add hack5.org to a whitelist, clear unwanted cookies, or show more options. If I click on show more options, I do get those more options. Um, I can do the same things here, whitelist Hack 5. 
I can choose when to delete unwanted cookies, which you can do anything on here, it doesn't really matter. I'd probably choose the least amount, five, 10 minutes maybe. And you can also add feedback and use diagnostic tools to see um, exactly what's going on, on with the cookies. Now this can be really, really useful if your machine is getting extremely bogged down and you always forget to delete cookies. Um, very important, so if you don't do it already, make sure to get on that. And last but not least is HTTPS Everywhere. And this one does exactly what it says it does. It sets many unsecure sites to automatically connect to HTTPS instead of HTTP. Now, while this isn't necessarily new and it's not something you'll remember to do every time, just use this extension if you've never used it before because it's extremely useful and I definitely support it. It's very, very important to use HTTPS wherever you go. So I'll go ahead and enable this one. So I'm gonna open up a new tab here and I'm gonna to go to uh, Facebook. Now you can see here HTTP www.facebook.com. So it's, it's not very secure whenever you wanna first log into it. But as soon as you click into your bookmark or if you just choose facebook.com, type it up here, it's automatically going to switch you over to HTTPS. And you also get this cute little icon over here that tells you if it's working or if it's not. It forces encrypted connections to these websites. Beautiful. It's very simple to use and it takes up no memory What whatsoever, so I definitely support and uh, recommend that one to everybody. Now, I did mention at first I had a reason for disabling and enabling them at different times. You really don't want to use all of these at once if you're on an i3 processor like I am right now on my little laptop, or it's going to completely kill and freeze your computer no matter what operating system you're using. It was kind of bad, so I had to restart and, and disable everything before I was able to do this segment. Now, I hope that these different extensions helped you. I know there's quite a few other ones out there. There's like a JavaScript killer and a couple of other ones. There's Disconnect 2, but you got to pay for that. So let me know which ones you really like if you prefer one of these the most, because I haven't really chosen one or the other, although I do really like NotScript. That one's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know in the feedback or the comments below, because we do read those. And we'll be right back after the break. Hello? Hey, Darren, what am I going to do? The printer won't print. Can you come up here? No, I'm kind of occupied right now. Well, what on earth am I going to do? There are all of these overnights that have to go out today. Oh. Hang on. You guys know how it is. Big IT shops, small businesses, it's all the same. When computer issues come up, you need to solve it fast. Every minute counts. I'm going to connect to your computer with GoToAssist. I stopped juggling multiple support tools years ago when I discovered GoToAssist by Citrix. It's no wonder they're the leader in remote support. And the latest version is wicked. Let me tell you, the service desk allows you to track all of those incidents. The monitoring tool allows you to be proactive about your network. And of course, the remote support for PC, Mac, even mobile. I'm using it now to connect to one of my computers computers that are set up for unattended support. Okay, is it printing now? It's printing, you're an IT hero. That's right, I am an IT hero. to assist. You can be an IT hero too. All you have to do is get yourself a special free trial. Visit gotoassist.com, click the try it free button, and use the promo code HACK5. That about wraps up this episode of Hack5, but first, we do value your feedback, so email us feedback at hack5.org and let us know what you think of the show and what you'd like to see us cover. And don't forget, you can always follow everything that we do over at hack5.org slash follow, especially hackacrossamerica.com. You'll find links to all of our social networks and what's going on with Darren and Hack Across America, everything over there. And if you like what we're doing and you wanna support us directly, we have some awesome Hack5 hacker gadgets at Hack. Shop.com, including the new battery pack, the Wi-Fi pineapple bundle, even the travel bundle. It's back in stock. And with all of that, I'm Shannon Morse, and for Darren Kitchen, trust your technolust. Bye-bye. Cylons.
end with that. My name is Sharon. You even said your own name wrong. <laughs> you said your own name wrong. <laughs> this is my new microphone. It's um, some people may call it a half inch wrench, but uh, I told them to go off. Everybody calls me Sharon, and now I'm doing it to myself. <laughs> no. Sure. Let me just. <laughs> it's time to go. I, I could just be like, yeah, so last week's trivia question was, 